I'm an insect nerd. So what's cool to me is not going to be cool, I think, to the general public. Right now, I'm actually obsessed with butterflies. My lab studies a bunch of things. I'm studying urban trees and their insects and microbiomes. So my PhD thesis is investigating urban mosquitoes, but more specifically looking into how microplastics and mosquitoes interact with each other. My lab group does both uh, a whole bunch of insect sort of biodiversity and conservation work as well as a whole bunch of plankton work. I'm working on a directed studies project which is about how microplastic contamination affects microalgae populations. I'm also interested in how heat waves affects um, the production of essential fatty acids in microalgae. All the really important fats originate in phytoplankton. And when you crank up the temperature in the water, phytoplankton make fewer of those really healthy fats and that effect actually cascades up the food chain. They're uh, primarily interested, I guess, in how little things, so insects, zooplankton, phytoplankton, how they are responding to climate change as well as other anthropogenic or sort of human-driven changes in the environment such as um, pollution or urbanization or um, like changes in the habitat. So one of the research questions that we're really interested in right now is trying to figure out if insects all around the world are shrinking in response to climate change and we think it's the insects might be doing that because when you grow them at warmer temperatures, they tend to turn into smaller sized adults. So we use a combination of lab experiments, um, outdoor experiments, and museum collections to uh, try to measure insect body size changes with temperature. We use a lot of the insect collections that are stored at the museum to try to understand insect communities in the past and compare them to insect communities that we would see outside right now. Some of our stuff we do in the field, which means it's another word for saying we do it outdoors. People don't think about golf courses very much in terms of ecology, but golf courses are actually really important habitat for urban wildlife. And we use something like this, which is called a pitfall trap. Um, we stick it in the ground and then insects fall in and we look at which, what insects live in golf courses. Whenever we're doing an experiment in the lab, we try to make sure that it's also relevant in nature. We actually use a lot of the same materials that you might actually find in your house. If you can't find it at Canadian Tire, you don't need it. <laughs> when we're in the lab, we're usually um, we're growing insects in these temperature-controlled incubators, or we're also growing plankton in these temperature-controlled incubators. So we have a lot of beakers or a lot of jars everywhere, and each beaker or jar has a few insects or a few plankton in them, and we're growing them in these um, incubators that are being raised at different temperatures. And in the lab, it's really important that you have, well, actually in the field as well, that you have a lot of replication for your experiment. So we usually, when you come into the lab and we're doing an experiment, there's just beakers and beakers and beakers everywhere. So that's pretty fun. Ecology, I didn't know this coming into it, but it makes sense. Um, and I thought every science looks like this, but it's not. Ecology is so stats heavy. I love sitting in front of the computer and making um, different graphs of the data. And I think that those graphs are what tell the story. And then you use the statistics to help back up the patterns that you're seeing in the graphs. So a big part of the work that we do is uh, analyzing the data. And typically we're doing this in R, using RStudio. What's important about ecological theory or mathematical theory or any sort of theory is that it helps you think really broadly about um, what are the mechanisms that are giving rise to the patterns that you see here. 
We want you to be um, thinking super broadly, not just about this particular case study and what are the nuts and bolts that are driving that case study, but if you apply a theoretical framework on it, then um, all of a sudden those mechanisms can be applied to a bunch of different situations. We actually work a lot with other UBC colleagues um, who have slightly different interests than ours and slightly different cool toys than we do. It's nice to work with people who think a little bit differently than you do about the same question because then you get different perspectives on that same question. We work a lot with um, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, so that's a federal Canadian federal organization. Last year, City of Vancouver came to the Sang Lab wanting to understand how introduction of tap water uh, into their bodies of water around the City of Vancouver um, affects the uh, aquatic ecosystems. We're particularly interested in mosquito larvae because uh, we don't want mosquitoes in the summer. And so if we find out some sort of way to inhibit, it, inhibit them um, with the, or without the introduction of tap water, potentially we could introduce uh, or advise some sort of policy change that could help um, residents of Vancouver with the problem of mosquitoes. I also do a lot of work with a nonprofit organization in Canada called the David Suzuki Foundation. We teach people how to photograph butterflies and upload the images onto a website called iNaturalist. Um, we call them citizen scientists or community scientists. And what's really valuable about that is um, when we're trying to assess whether a butterfly is endangered or not in Canada, or if we're trying to assess whether there's a new invasive species that have, has just arrived in Canada, we can go to iNaturalist and look at all of these images that people have uploaded from um, around the country and that it's an incredible data source. Um, I get to look at really cool specimens um, and then I also kind of mount some of them. And I've been working on trying to get like a display or like a frame for them. I really enjoy the aspects of painting that are like kind of repetitive and calming and um, like you can almost make like art with some of the insects and some of the insects are really pretty looking too. People come from all different backgrounds in ecology and one of the characteristics that they share is that you have this weird curiosity. It's not weird, but it is, I mean, you're amongst friends, so you have this curiosity for the living world.